Hare Krishna. Welcome you all uh, for our beautiful sessions. And today is a Sunday. We uh, will continue our uh, Bhagavad Gita chapter discussions. Hmm? So let us begin with the prayers. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Dhyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Vande Ham Shri Guru Shri Yuta Padakamadam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Ravunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Pada Sahagana Ravita Shiv Shakan Tamsha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Mutinamine Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Namo Mahavadanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishna, ya Krishna Chaitanya, Namne Gaurat Vishenama. He Krishna, Karuna Sindho, Dina Bandho, Jagatpate, Gopesha, Gopika, Kantaradha, Kantanustate, Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi Radhe, Vrinda Vaneshwari, Vishabhano, Sute Devi, Pranamami, Adipri. Vancha kalpa taru gesha kripa sindhu bhai vacha pati tanam pavani bhyo vaishnavi bhyo namo namaha shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shri advaita gadadha shiva sadhigaura bhatta vinda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. So, with every rising and setting of the sun, our one one day get lost. <laughs> That's why what we say when somebody's birthday is there, we say now, happy birthday, now you have become a 20 year old or 30 year old. <laughs> old means what? That many years are gone now. That many years, the time has gone. It's not going to come back again. right? Now, let's say uh, some of you are in a 7th standard, 8th standard or 10th standard. You want to come back again to the 5th standard is possible? Okay. Yeah. Anyone can go back in their school? At least no school will allow, right? <laughs> you can do at home yourself, but nobody wants to waste the time again to come back and repeat the things. So that's what it's very, very important to utilize our time very, very properly. And Sunday is a very special time. Sunday because there is a holiday. At least once in a week they give holiday. <laughs> so we have a choice to make our holiday into holy day. And that's why Prabhupada has given this wonderful system in our ISKCON society. Where every day, not only Sunday, but every day is a holy day. Every day we get up. Every day we chant. Every day we pray to the Lord. Every day we sing the darshan, the kirtans of the Lord. We associate with the devotees. We have a nice prashadam. <laughs> Everything is a very, very holy. So, and that's what uh, we congratulate all of you for coming regularly every day for our classes. And then Sunday, we thought as we planned before. So, we are continuing our Bhagavad Gita chapter discussion. So, anyone remember what is acronym for a chapter one and a chapter two? We completed two chapters, right? So, quickly, can somebody say what is a acronym we studied for chapter one? The summary of Bhagavad Gita of chapter one. And a chapter no, doubt. Uh, doubt. <laughs> yeah. Because Arjuna was having a doubt. What was Arjuna's doubt? You know? Sir, how can I uh, fight my uh, guru? Ah, my very nice. Yeah. Our one friend have come, uh, Rohit, he's from a 10th standard. He's here with us live. Yeah, very good. Thank you. So Arjuna was having a doubt. That's why D O U B T. That's that acronym was given. D for 
quickly? Can someone say what is a D5? Deviation. <laughs> yeah, good guess. Yeah, here we studied in a different fashion. Yeah, D for what we discussed, yeah, remember? Yes, Divesh Pro, D for? Yeah, the dialogue spoken by, the opening verses that's spoken by Dhritarashtra, first for Dhritarashtra Vaja. And then Duryodhana also presented the armies of both the parties. So D for Duryodhana and uh, Dhritarashtra. O for D O. O for? Go for ominous results, ominous hmm? omens, the kind of a, because the consuls were blown and the armies were yeah, shipped. That, that our consuls were blown. So when, when the consuls were blown, all the soldiers on the Duryodhan side, their hearts were uh, shattered. Yes, hearts were shattered. Very nice. <laughs> o for ominous. U for D O U. U for. Then the next section of the first chapter. That's a, uh, uncertainty. Arjuna's uncertainty to fight or not. Right? And a B for yeah, B for bewilderment. And the T for finally, T for the what is a T for? Finally, Arjuna says, Sasrujja Sasaram Chapam, Shoka Samvigna Manasa. I drop down my Gandhi above. I don't want to fight. So that's what lamentation, the turning point. Arjuna came for the battle. But at the end of the chapter one, the turning point, he dropped the uh, weapons down. His gun gave a bow. He was not ready to fight. So that's the summary of chapter one, D-O-U-B-T, doubt. That's what verses were being spoken. The second chapter, then where Krishna, Arjuna again puts the request to Lord Krishna, accept me as your disciple, please instruct me. And then Lord Krishna starts speaking. Opening verses of Lord Krishna begins in the second chapter, 2.11. So, what is the acronym for second chapter? Anyone remember? Anyone else who were there last time? Yeah. You, you all are able to see that acronym? Is it visible? That Gita Prabhu? Yeah, yes. Yeah, ominous results, uncertainty. Yeah. So, what is the second chapter we studied? Contents of the Gita summarized. <laughs> what is the acronym of the second chapter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, because the title itself says contents of the Gita. What all throughout the Gita is spoken, yeah, that is being kind of given in a gist, given in a summary in the second chapter. So that's what the acronym is made Gita, G I T A. And what is that G for? Arjuna's accept. Guru Prabhu. Uh, Arjuna. Yeah, yeah, Arjuna accepts the Guru Prabhu. Yes, that is Guru. I for then Lord Krishna starts speaking. I. What is that I? <laughs> the very first ABC of Bhagavad Gita. What is that ABC of Bhagavad Gita? The basics of Bhagavad Gita is being taught. I am not this body, I am the soul. Yeah, I am not this body, but I am a spirit soul. This body is a temporary. Arjun, you are thinking that you are going to kill the, your relatives and all, but don't worry. We are all eternal. The soul continues. Dehi nosmi netha dehi kaumara myovanam jara. Navani grinnati naroparani. The soul gives up the old and puts on to the new one. Just as, what is that analogy Lord Krishna says? Yeah, just as means one takes up that old and torn clothes and he means wears another fresh clothes. Yeah, correct. Garments, change of the garments. Old garments you give up, they put on to the new one. So this whole beautiful section about identity. How we are not this. Uh -huh. Again, the soul. Soul cannot be burned into pieces. Soul cannot be uh, like burned, cut into the pieces, withered by the wind, moistened by the water. Not possible. All this beautiful section was na jayate imrete va kadachin. That's jata sehidro mrityo. That comes in the next section. Yeah. Then T for G I. Guru. Arjuna's acceptance of Krishna as a guru. I for identity. Lord Krishna presents that we are not the body of. The soul is our true identity. Then T. What is the T for? Next chapter, next portion of the chapter. Krishna gives a further reason for him to fight. So that is called as uh, the first is a Jnana Yoga. Krishna describes the knowledge, Sankhya philosophy. Then now about Karma Yoga. That is about uh, two duties. Anyone remember? The Krishna says the two duties we have. The Swadharma. <laughs> as a Kshatriya, you should fight. And then, uh, what is that another word we read? Yeah. 
सनातन धर्म या सधर्म स्वधर्म एंड सनातन धर्म सो एज यू आर अ क्षत्रिय युअर ड्यूटी इज टू फाइट सो फाइट फॉर द सेक ऑफ एज अनर टू युअर पोजिशन एज अ क्षत्रिय एंड सनातन धर्म मीन्स वे आर सर्विंग द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड द सोल्स नेचर इज टू सर्व द लॉर्ड राइट सो एज अ सर्विस टू मी यू फाइट सो दिस टू रीजन्स कृष्ण पुट्स टू ड्यूटीज टू काइंड ऑफ ड्यूटीज material so we should have a balance or in english we said conditional duties constitutional duties conditional duties means now for all of us we are students put our best efforts into studies as an offering to the supreme lord <laughs> we should be best student means we should try at least performing our best hmm? and then we should be like means role model so then means other will ask that how you study so much yeah. nicely so then we can reflect in because means yes. i practice consciousness that's why we can show them they will ask you how you are so successful you can show them because i chant every day hari krishna this is my success <laughs> because i follow krishna that's why and of course uh, after putting efforts also sometime we may not become successful externally but at least we should not give up putting our efforts and that's what lord krishna says to arjun are arjun if you don't fight you run away people will call you coward you're you are what you call, what you say you are fearful afraid you are showing yes, that when you are running away <laughs> they will not glorify you because out of compassion you left them <laughs> and then if you fight if you win you will have a sovereignty of the planet you will get the kingdom kingship and even if you die while fighting what will happen what is a good thing after dying yeah promise me you will get karga Yeah, he will attain heaven. He will get a swarga. Tetham, uh, uh, what is that uh, shloka? It says anyway, it comes. So he he will get the heaven. He will. So in both the cases, there is no loss. Arjun fight. So that's the reason Krishna presents. And then finally, uh, Arjuna inquires, "What are the? How do I know that who are having this? Because especially Lord Krishna describes to work on a sanatana dharma. Neha bhikramana shosti pratyavayo na vidyate." स्वल्पमप्यस्य धर्मस्य एनी वन नोस फोर्थ लाइन स्वल्पमप्यस्य धर्मस्य त्रायते महतो भयात इट विल सेव वन फ्रॉम द ग्रेटेस्ट डेंजर इफ यू जस्ट टेक अ स्टेप ऑन दिस पाथ जस्ट डू लिटिल एफर्ट स्वल्पमप्यस्य नॉट दैट यू हैव टू बिकम एक्सपर्ट इफ यू बिकम एक्सपर्ट दैट इज ग्रेट बट लिटिल एफर्ट बट व्हाट इज द नंबर ऑफ दिस श्लोक 2.40 2.40 वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्ड्स एंड वेरी होप गिविंग वर्ड्स आल्सो Prabhupada also has written a very beautiful purport, in which last line Prabhupada says in that purport, right? Uh, what is that greatest danger? Losing one's human form of life, and again glide down to the lower species. <laughs> so that's a danger, isn't it? Like let's say I don't know now which body I'll get, will who will be my father, mother, and which form, which shape. <laughs> But if you perform Krishna consciousness, at least next life human life is guaranteed. Whether going Goloka, Vaikunda, even if it's not possible. But at least human form of life in the devotee opportunity is given to us. So that's what Krishna concludes. That then Arjuna asks the intelligent question: "Sthita pradne se ka bhasha samadhi sthita se keshava." And so there's a five five question uh, Arjuna puts: How do I know who is a perfect devotee? How does he sit? How does he walk? How does he speak? Right. So how does he sit means not like a, does he sit on a chair or is it no? Sit means how he is situated in his life. right when the reversal comes ups and downs how he situate how he situate himself how does he speak means how does he respond to the different uh, situations in the life hmm? how does he walk means what steps he takes in his life hmm? what choices he makes and that's what very very important section so so many beautiful verses last time we showed you the cycle of fall down how what happens because one is not uh, contemplating on a good thing contemplation on the wrong wrong object That's a dhyato vishyan pumsa. Two point sixty two and sixty three. These two verses speaks about fall down. And then Krishna gives the very nice uh, analogies of a uh, ocean. As the river flushes into the ocean, ocean is not disturbed. Ocean is peaceful. Apurya manam machalam pratishtam samudra ma pa pravishanti yadvad samudra me pravesh karte hai rivers. But ocean is peaceful. Hmm? सशातिमा प्रवशंति तत्वा प्रवशंति सर्वे स शांति मोति न काम कामी न काम कामी वन हू इज डिजायरस ऑफ फुलफिलिंग हिज मेन्टल डिजायर्स वॉन्ट टू एंजॉय हिज सेंस ग्रेटिफिकेशन 
he will not be peaceful whereas one who can control the cravings of the mind he will attain the peace sa shanti ma apnoti and that's what krishna concludes that how one attains the transcendence so this is a second chapter okay so second chapter is called as sankhya yoga uh, in the english uh, sanskrit okay so now let's begin with the third chapter first chapter is vishada yoga right the observing the armies on the battlefield second chapter is a uh, vishada means actually lamentation but prabhupad made us to understand what the chapter is he has given in that way and then the second chapter sankhya yoga krishna consciousness is summarized so the chut contents of the gita summarized prabhupad has given name and third chapter is a correct the same name sanskrit also and english also that's a karma yoga <laughs> what is the literally meaning of the word karma 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 karo phal ki aasha mat karo hindi dese na ye yeah, pro karma means actually work prabhu ha ah, work to doing doing a work karya in hindi se karya karma and that's what a, a work right so a, nobody can we say i am idol i don't work no everyone have to work right but that work will become worship provided that's what the word yoga gets added people this you know karma hi samadhi hai hmm? <laughs> karma hi karna apna kartavya even a donkey is also working then <laughs> can donkey become krishna conscious then because just because he is working no you are working for whom what you are doing with the results of your work hmm? and how one should work ideally in the life so that iha loka siddhi para loka prapti we achieve the best thing in this world also and we attain the best destination in the future world also So this is how all summarized karma yoga okay so please read someone quickly this description of karma paragraph here <clears throat> yeah please start okay a tree produces many fruits but selflessly offers them to others <laughs> tree doesn't charge anything oh you have to pay for me <laughs> all year round the tree dutifully offers shade and shelter regardless of mistreatment by man or animal right tree doesn't stop giving nature right that's what beautifully compared to a tree <laughs> that's what this chapter name acronym they made a tree <laughs> that's another interesting yeah even when a tree is cut it grows back with determination and strength ready to serve the world again isn't it we see we throw the stone on the tree and the stone give, uh, the tree gives in return what does the tree throws another stone in return what the tree gives in return so the fruit the tree is so hard then the stone gets inflicted ah uh, of course uh, it will not come so tree will not eating. but in general if there are fruits we hit on the tree for getting a fruit we get a fruit in return yeah so tree never stays are why you are hitting me a stone i will not give you fruit and not in that sense right and we hit a we sit under a tree get a shadow but tree is getting a scorching sun on its own hmm? we cut the tree and go back tree doesn't stop for another hit when we are putting like like somebody hits me from behind immediately i'll stop who is hitting me <laughs> but tree never mind sacrifices is determined to continue to grow and render service to the world again the life and qualities of a tree gives us profound insight into the art of living in this world while simultaneously remaining completely aloof chapter 3 defines the practice of karma yoga the technique of achieving spiritual connection with god through our daily work describing the life of a true karma yogi bible also affirms be in the world but not of it of it and be in the world but not of this world <laughs> so that's how this is the art of work that also you learn in this chapter okay so these are the acronym t r w e t for tyaga or renunciation r for rungs on the yoga uh, yoga ladder rungs means what anyone knows the english meaning rung r u n g rungs rungs of the yoga ladder rungs means the different stages hmm? different divisions that's the meaning of rungs and e for exemplary in this chapter lord krishna gives a example of one character anyone knows <laughs> who is example lord krishna quotes like this you should work in your life an example he gives <laughs> third chapter okay let us see we'll read here how many of you recollect that at then you can tell and e enemy of the soul the most important section what happens for why we are not able to work in an exemplary manner what forces us athakena prayuktoyam 
ಪಾಪಂ ಚರತಿ ಪುರುಷ ಬಲಾದಿವ ನಿಯೋಜಿತ ಲೈಕ್ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ಫುಲಿ ಸಮ್ ಸಮ್ಬಡಿ ಪುಷಿಂಗ್ ಅಸ್ ಟು ಡೂ ರಾಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಅಲ್ದ ಐ ನೋ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರೈಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ರಾಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಸಮ್ಬಡಿ ಇಸ್ ಫೋರ್ಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೀ ಫ್ರಮ್ ವಿದ್ ಇನ್ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ಅರ್ಜುನ ಪುಟ್ಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಟೆಲಿಜೆಂಟ್ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ಹಾಂ ಯಾ ಸೊ ಲಾರ್ಡ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ದ ರೂಟ್ ಕಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಕಾಮ ಏಷ ಕ್ರೋಧ ಏಷ ರಜೋಗುಣ ಸಮುದಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಲಸ್ಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಕಮಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಮೈಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸಿಚುಯೇಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ you know like to read uh, you all are comfortable or not okay. t t t for tyaga or renunciation yes verses 1 to 9 anyone like to volunteer read yeah bro i can read bro yes thank you please yeah okay bro tyaga renunciation verses 1 to 9 at first arjuna displays the typical confusion of an immature spiritualist he thinks spirituality means retirement from active life and the adoption of asceticism in strict seclusion seclusion often the easiest response in times of difficulty is one of escapism worldly worldly life entails awkward dealings with money possessions people and career to name of to name but a few how can such a life can be compatible with spiritual goals krishna explains that to renunciation does not entail a mere abandonment of worldly duties to renunciation is to give up the mentality that one is the controller and enjoyer of all his deeds thus by offering the results of one's daily work money knowledge influence etc to god knowing god to be the ultimate enjoyer and controller one achieves real state of renunciation thank you bro yeah very nice good reading yeah thank you bro here krishna actually why it begins this section because uh, arjuna was uh, yeah, i i'll show you that exact reason you all are able to see these notes bhagavad gita notes is it visible yeah okay so in the second chapter when lord krishna describes about this uh, uh, renunciations work in a spirit of you know, i mean one should give up the things so arjuna misunderstood arjuna was thinking oh you are telling me to fight and then at the same time what is yeah yes you can carry the thing thank you i uh, you can write your mail id you you use mail yes sir you can right so i can send you the zoom details you can join for daily class now yeah, so here the uh, second uh, chapter at the end uh, you you see uh, about uh, arjuna's confusion this is clarifying because lord krishna concluded sa shanti mapnoti one should be peaceful detached <laughs> so then uh, arjuna was confused you want me to fight also and you want to write right? yeah. yeah okay yeah okay. 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 Uh, here is a summary just a minute third chapter yeah, i see here arjuna is confused you 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 all are able to see arjuna is confused based on the text 2.49 arjuna doubts the compatibility of karma duty of fighting and jnana buddhi yoga based on the knowledge of the soul and request for the one conclusive path so in the 2.49 verse i can put it here sir all are small letters yes yes okay focus okay. okay, sir thank you thank you for coming next keep coming dure nahi avaram karma ಬುದ್ಧಾಂ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯೋಗ ಧನಂಜಯ ಯು ಕೀಪ್ ದ ವರ್ಕ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅವೇ ಬೈ ಯೂಸಿಂಗ್ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯೋಗ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ನಾಟ್ ಫೈಟ್ ಅರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಒನ್ ಶುಡ್ ಗಿವ್ ಅಪ್ ದ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದ
So, so that's what he was a bit confused. He asked for the right method, what to do, what to follow. Yeah. So that's what uh, this chapter begins with the, the section. Uh, now I think we'll see those Bhagavad Gita verses also. You all are able to see that uh, Bhagavad Gita screen? Veda base screen? Yes? Hare Krishna? Is the screen is visible? Veda base screen? Yeah, problem. No, no. Yeah, here Arjuna asked, what do you want? Why do you want to engage me in this ghastly warfare if you think that intelligence is better than the fruity work? <laughs> so that's why he had asked the question. So Jai Sichet Karmanaste Mata Buddhir Janardana Tatkim Karmani Ghore Ma Nyoja Yasi Keshava. Why do you want to engage me in this ghastly work? And that's what Krishna yeah, he says. My intelligence is bewildered by your equivocal instructions. Equivocal means uh, Krishna said you do this also and you do that also. <laughs> then what? You fight also but you don't fight also. Then what, what shall I do? <laughs> Actually Arjuna is confusion. It's not that he is uh, less intelligent. No. Uh, Lord Krishna used Arjuna so that you and me and every one of us can learn in a right way. We should not have left any doubts reading about Lord Krishna uh, instructions. Arjuna became the instrument so that Lord Krishna speaks out this wonderful message and such crystal clear clarifications. And therefore, uh, Arjuna is putting this question uh, and he is telling, please therefore tell me decisively which will be the most beneficial for me. So here another interesting thing, question and answer is always part of discussion. If you don't ask questions, then uh, the two things. It means we are understood everything <laughs> or we have not understood anything. So we have a choice. And I'm sure all of you are understanding nicely. But point is uh, intelligence means one will surely the sign, one who is asking a question means what? He really wants to know. He really wants to learn. Question in a right spirit. That's what in the fourth chapter you'll, you'll, you'll learn one very famous verse. Tadviddhi pranipatena Pari prashnena. Their word comes pari prashnena. Means prashna. Asking questions. Why we do like this? What is it is? What is things and all? Means basically one is want to become. So when questions are clear, when doubts becomes clear, then our faith becomes strong. So this is another important thing we learn from this Arjuna. In Srimad Bhagavatam also, Parikshit Maharaj is asking question to Shukdev Goswami. Vidura is asking question to Maitriyamana. Mother Devot is asking to Kapila. <laughs> right? Repeatedly. Naimi Sharanya sages, they are asking question to Sutta Goswami. So, all over, question answer session is always there. Prabhupada writes that in the Bhagavatam, one of the parts. Even birds also get up morning, they start the question answer. Choo 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 choo. <laughs> Where is my food? Where is my food? Where is my house? Where is my water? Things. So, questions about what? Athato Brahma Jidnyasa. You do inquiry about. Brahma, about Supreme Lord. Then those question answers are meaningful. Then those questions are Bhagavad Gita, Loka Mangalam. It will sanctify. That's topics of this question answers. Uh, water being, because they are in connection with the Supreme Lord, that will sanctify the whole world. That will benefit for everyone. So that's what one should uh, uh, inquisitive. That's the point. One should not blindly follow. One should always ask questions. And that's why in our ISKCON we have question answer session. <laughs> After every class or things, we take a question answer. Anyone have any questions? <laughs> you will not find this thing anywhere else. Over a katha, or everyone goes back, finish. <laughs> but Prabhupada wanted to make sure everyone understands nicely and become a better in the practice. So that's what Arjuna is asking question and Lord Krishna is replying. There are two classes of men. Some are inclined to by philosophical learning that is called as Jnana Yoga and other by devotional service, Buddhi Yoga. So these two things are being described here. So what is a T for? Tyaga, right? T for Tyaga, we saw, renunciation. But then now here Krishna describes, nor by merely abstaining for work can one achieve the freedom for, from reaction, nor by renunciation alone can one attain perfection. So these are a bit technicals, just to say in a simple word, which you learn again future. Just have an idea. Right? People think that if I give up my work, because work causes entanglement. So let me not to work only. <laughs> so then if I give up the work only, that will not make one free from the reaction what are there in the past. Right? And nor by renunciation alone. 
renunciation alone means okay just remain like a uh, renunciate like a monk but then don't do anything right don't uh, work for a krishna then that also will not make one perfect so either of the two ways one will not be happy yeah. and then krishna says nahi kashchit uh, yeah nahi kashchit kshanam api ek kshan ke liye bhi jatu tishta akarma krut akarma krut nobody can stay even for a moment without doing any work <laughs> one should surely work that is one nature therefore no one can refrain from doing something not even for a moment because we are ca- caught by the three modes we get carried away by doing some works yeah and then this verse ka- karma nindriya samya astevan yeah very nice it says one who restrain the senses of action but whose mind dwells on the sense objects certainly deludes himself and is called a pretender like a pretender means what anyone knows this english word pretender very nice a very nice word means <laughs> yeah what is meaning by pretender hey don't pretend na be honest they say na <laughs> what is meaning by pretender one who pretends pretend it's pretend tendency to do something which we are not pretend is basically cheating or in hindi they say dhongi baba <laughs> i don't know hindi you know or not, but yeah that's the word basically uh, false false gurus bogus gurus hmm? externally they have a sh- dress of a sadhu externally they have the kind of a, a look like a sadhu but they are not so in the mind they are thinking to cheat the people in the mind they are thinking to do something wrong with the people loot them or things you know so this is the bogus so krishna says one who restrain the senses of action means i am not doing any work right and i am sitting like a sadhu but in my mind what's going so there is a form and there is a function both things are important just having a form of a sadhu but not functioning as a sadhu like nowadays uh, in the olden days a thief and a terrorist means what everyone knows when i will be closed one will have a black spot here <laughs> how many of you know you have seen those pictures <laughs> yeah they will have a one black things here kept only one eye then the black spot here and the hairs will be like a black cloth and they will have a very sharp yeah, Yeah, bro, means they, 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 so sometimes means they, they just mean a wrapper, the cloth means like a... Yeah, <laughs> just by yeah, that... Means, yeah. It means under means forehead, they, they, they wrap it in cloth and here, here one eye will be closed, here the only one means like black spot like the cloth. Yeah, means by, just by looking them only one will understand he is a thief. Nowadays, thieves are not visible like a thief. some will be maybe very nicely polished dress or some things shakes and very yeah. very good but suddenly he will remove the knife and uh, stab the person suddenly he will uh, take away the money and run away oh i never thought he is a thief he was so well looking <laughs> so something like that that's called as a pretender hmm? so somebody in the dress of a sadhu may be like that but then he he is cheating a people that's why in a society we see there are so many bogus gurus main reason is this only because the their mind is on dwelling on a sense objects so that's what it's not so form and a function two f you can remember we should have a form of a sadhu we should put a tilak and all but we should live also life like a sadhu live also like a devotee not that just a look of a devotee but live also life of a devotee and live life of a devotee means one should have a proper dealings having a good qualities respecting elders being obedient honest truthful honestly working in the life oh because just by by chant hari krishna that's all no they should live also life like that it's a, then chanting surely will bring out good qualities but if you not then surely chanting will also make us forget ourselves the chanting will give us punishment because we are not behaving properly yeah that's the other hand krishna says if a person is sincerely tries to control the active senses by the mind and begins karma yoga means working for krishna without attachment he is far superior <laughs> falsely doing or showing showing a show of a sadhu and not uh, rather cheating and engaging a mind wrong way better than that person who is a sincere honest who does work work for krishna with his mind and senses trying to keep them in a control he is much more better and working without attachment so very very important concept actually our time is just for a summary purpose we will not get into details now yeah 
Par, and then that's what Arjuna is being instructed by the Lord. Perform your prescribed duty. For doing so is better than not working. One cannot even maintain one's physical body without work. One should work ultimately. So Arjuna, work your Akshatriya. And then this is a famous verse. This is a memorization verse, 3.9. Yadnyarthat karma no anyatra lokoyam karma bandhanaha tadartham karma kaunteya mukta sangha samachara. Yadnyarthat karma no. One should work for yadnya. One should work for the sacrifice to the Supreme Lord. But anyatra lokoyam karma bandhana. If you don't work for Krishna, Anyatra. The other work will make the people bound. Karma bandhana. <laughs> so that's Arjun. Tadartham karma kaunteya. You work Arjun for the sacrifice of the Lord as a service to the Lord. Mukta sangha samachara. You will become mukta. Not bandhana, but you will become mukta. <laughs> so very famous verse. Work done as a sacrifice for Vishnu has to be performed. Otherwise work causes a bondage. So perform your duties for his satisfaction. One should work what Krishna wants us to do, not what we want to do. Okay. Like in a home, our parents want us to study nicely, get up early, be, be like a good student. But then child doesn't want to do. <laughs> then, then parents will not be happy. It's like that, similar at the broader scale, Krishna is our supreme father. We all should know what our father wants us to do. Become a devotee of Krishna, right? chant the holy names. Then for his satisfaction when we work, then one will remain free from the bondage. One will not get caught up, okay? So this is a 3.9, 1 to 9 about uh, the uh, tyaga, the renunciation, okay? Let's put up the screen. And then the R, rungs. This is also a very interesting section. Now quickly read, someone would like to read. Rungs on the yoga ladder. Yoga ladder means the yoga. There are karma yoga, jnana yoga. Buddhi Yoga, I mean the uh, Sankhya Yoga, and then the uh, Ashtanga Yoga, and then the Bhakti Yoga. In Karma Yoga also, there are different types. So that's what is mean Krishna describes here. Rungs on the Yoga Ladder, verses 10 to 16. To work without any selfish motivation whatsoever is undoubtedly an advanced stage of spiritual realization. Hmm? So work without any selfish motivation. So our teacher was telling Selfish means it stinks like a fish. It's very bad. If somebody is a selfish person, nobody will be able to stay with such person for a long time. But one should be, what is opposite of selfish? Yes. What is opposite of selfish? Oh, no one knows. You don't know opposite words. Synonyms and opposite words are what you can say. English. Selfless. Ah, selfless. Selfless. Don't consider one's own selfish things. Work selflessly. That's what is being written. That's the highest. Thus, Krishna explains how to progress to such a level. Means to go to the selfless level. He describes a yoga ladder. The different rungs which represents progressively higher levels of understanding. So that step we should follow by which we can go to that best standard. On the lowest level, an individual is solely interested in materialistic enjoyment and has no spiritual inclination. So that was that is called as karma only. Hmm? Karma, not karma yoga. Karma, only karma means that. Hmm? So karma yoga means that the working for Krishna when he starts, that's what that becomes karma yoga. Yoga means addition, yuj dhatu. It comes from a yuj Sanskrit dhatu to add God in the life. Hey. Karma yoga, working for Krishna. But the lowest is a karma, working only materialistic enjoyment, not interested for Krishna, spirituality. One stage higher is karma khanda. When one is still desire material enjoyment, but now he follows the scripture. That's what it is written. Via religious observation, right? Like karma, working only for a selfish things. Second, better than that, working for a selfish thing only, but as per the scripture, <laughs> Not wrong way, like Hiranyakashipu was doing in a wrong way. Kidnapping the people, looting them and wanted to enjoy. But better than that, you want to enjoy to follow scripture. Scripture says you worship this God, you do this puja to get this material benefit, these things, okay, fine. One accepts some spiritual things, uh, I mean Vedic things. That's a karma kanda. 
then beyond that when one realizes the futility of material enjoyment they progress to sakama karma yoga when one begins to offer a portion of his results to god but still maintain selfish motivation <laughs> so you are understanding the level you are you are getting the ladder is it making sense uh, i i'll show you those uh, st- uh, images also it's a picture real presentation so first is karma then karma kanda then sakama karma yoga he does what he wants to do for his selfish thing but then he gives a part of that to the god he <laughs> following the scripture and then offering a little bit to the god but still wanted to do what he wants to do <laughs> yeah there is mention now at the next stage is the nishkama karma yoga one accepts whatever necessity he requires to maintain himself and offers everything else to the god so there practically he keeps very minimum for himself what is needed but gives completely to the supreme lord and those who progress to the higher stage this level of spirituality break free of, of all karmic implications and become peaceful and liberated <laughs> so that's how krishna describes so let me uh, now we'll not get into the verses because or maybe quickly we'll see that because these are important verses and these are things yeah this is a tenth one yeah so very nicely it is being explained how one should how it is the creation happened krishna gave this uh, sacrifice be thou be happy by this yagna he gave for the humanity to, to water they want hmm? and then by worshiping those gods and all they get the things parasparam bhavayanta the men worship demigods by giving yagna sacrifice for them demigods in return give the uh, phala the result what they want material prosperity like in a krishna book we read right vrajavasis were worshiping indra for rains and the indra was showering the rains for them yeah. and that's what it happened yeah so this is being supplied uh, how the system works this is also great science actually people doesn't understand that demigods are the one who here it comes very interesting word this is a memorization word 3.30 yadna shishta shina santo mukchante sarva kelvishai भुंजते ते तु अघम पापा ये पचन्त्यात्म कारणात वन हु डजंट वर्क फॉर यज्ञ वन वन हु वांट्स टू एंजॉय फॉर हिमसेल्फ ओनली देन ही इज ईटिंग ओनली पापा ही डज ओनली द सिंपल एक्टिविटीज दैट्स व्हाट कृष्णा सेज इन दिस वर्स वेरी वेरी स्ट्रांग वर्स हियर ड्यूटीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड आर रिलीज्ड ऑफ ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ सिंस बिकॉज़ दे ईट फूड व्हिच इज फर्स्ट ऑफर्ड एज अ सैक्रिफाइस दे ऑफर एवरीथिंग टू द लॉर्ड देन दे टेक बट अदर्स who prepare food for a personal sense enjoyment they don't offer to the lord they don't thank the lord they take for themselves only very eat only sin they're eating food but they're taking sin only that's why why prabhupad said first offer it to the lord we should take only prasad that <laughs> in our homes also we can keep a photo of the lord radha and krishna madan mohan frame i'm sure all of you have that Right. and you can offer it play to the lord keep a tulsi pray to the lord and then honor so they become sanctioned food and sanctified food to us then that will make us very very uh, happy in the life otherwise then we take the sin and sins are going accumulated and the re- reaction comes out in you know, that's what we get a problems in the life start offering food in the home you see how beautifully our life get transformed so this is a secret krishna says here right? why the sin comes because one is acting only for a selfish sense of enjoyment one is not offering to the lord okay? so offering food also but offering our work also in that sense both hmm? so atma karana they just take the prepare the food for their own sense of enjoyment you know yeah here prabhupad writes you see therefore in the in order for the people to become happy in all respect they must be taught to perform the easy process of sankirtana otherwise there will be no peace in the world <laughs> prabhupad says prepare food for sense gratification are not only thieves but also the eaters of all how can a person be happy who is a both thief and a sinful <laughs> right so it is not possible so right? a thief is never happy or peaceful but devotee of the lord because he connects to the yeah. and then this is how the rains comes how the grains grow this is a famous verse अन्नाभवन्ति भूतानि परिजन्यादन्न संभव यज्ञाद्भवति परिजन्यो यज्ञकर्म समुद्भव सो 3.14 यू कैन टेक अ नोट दिस आल्सो मेमोराइजेशन वर्ड्स द लिविंग एंटिटी सब्सिस्ट ऑन अन्न अन्नाद्भवन्ति भूतानि परिजन्यात अन्न बाय रेन्स द अन्न ग्रोस द ग्रेन ग्रोस 
and how the rains are coming anyone understanding in this verse how the rains are coming then the living entity depends on the food the food is growing because of the rains how the rains are coming why the rains are coming yadnyad bhavati parjanyo yes because yagyas are done to me ah because of the sacrifice done to the supreme lord yadnya karma samudbhava which yadnya then our work becomes uh, proper hmm? yadnya is born of our prescribed duty so it's very very important words nowadays why rains are not coming of course now it is coming nicely because of lockdown <laughs> but generally even in hyderabad during prabhupada's arrival there were no rains it was dry then prabhupada and all the disciples they did a great kirtan and then the hyderabad was flooded with the rains there is one video prabhupada says <laughs> hyderabad was showered by the rains so want the rains act as per the prescribed duty then the gods will shower the rain but if you don't follow the laws then as a punishment rains are not given weather is un- untimely then all the problems there are droughts and then the food is not grown properly so this one should know so prabhupada writes very very beautiful purports and concludes every time how one should perform sankirtan yajna that is a prescribed work for kaliva <laughs> and then 3.15 so in the such by regulated work one uh, connects to the supreme lord all pervading trance is eternally situated in the act of sacrifice okay so these are up to 16 now one more verse so this is a pravartitam chakram this is a chakra the food cycle how the rains are coming and all those so those who don't follow then the krishna says there there's life of a full of sin only so in mesh so living not only uh, living only for such and such such person lives in vain their life is useless no matter whatever work they do whatever great things they have life is simply useless so that's so important science isn't it we all are working in the life so everyone should know how to work so very very nicely is being described okay and let's see the next one uh, t for tyaga renunciation and r for runs the yoga ladder got it karma karma kanda then sakama karma yog nishkama karma yog four stages i'll show you at the end the picture also of that okay and then the e exemplary yad yad acharati shreshta stat deve taro jana the famous verse sayat pramanam kurute lokas tad anuvartate as the leaders do the common masses follow so it's very very important to set a good example in the society everyone knows that one should be good but then nobody is seeing an example of a good people and that's what people think that nowadays it's not possible to become good right there is no possible of becoming a devotee <laughs> so it's a great responsibility for all of us so that section says 17 to 35 yeah anyone is anyone can read e exemplary verses 17 to 35 who all are there today okay thus karma yoga is outlined as the practical process by which one overcomes his material attachments to work through working in the world so what about one who has achieved perfection through karma yoga do they need to continue working can they retire and simply meditate on god now that they are free of all selfish motivation krishna explains how perfected spiritualist continue working in the world for the sole purpose of setting the proper example for others to follow and be inspired so i'll just take you quickly exemplary so now we are learning how to work but then uh, why to work <laughs> why this why question is important to understand that's up to 35 words yeah yeah so this all goes up to the cycle of the working selflessly uh, the selfless man has no purpose to fulfill nor does any reason nor does it depends on other living entities therefore without being attached to the fruits of activity one should act as a matter of duty for by working without attachment one attains the supreme so anyway uh, yeah here it comes karman naivahi samsiddhim asthida janakadaya loka sangraham evapi sampashyan kartum arhasi so the people in the past like a king janak have perfection achieved perfection solely 
by performance of prescribed duties. Therefore, just for the sake of educating the people in general, you should perform your work. So that's what uh, Prabhupada, uh, the Krishna gives the example of Janak. How, how, and then there's a famous verse. This is also memorization verse 321. Whatever the leaders do, common masses follow. So please set a good example. And Krishna says, I am also working, although I don't have any work to do. Name Parthasti Kartavyam Trishu Lokeshu In all three planetary systems, I don't have any work to do. But still, I am also working. Just to set an example, otherwise people will say, God is only not doing. <laughs> so it's interesting. And if I, I don't work, Yadi aham na varteyam, jatu karma na tindret, mama vartmana vartante, manushya partha sarvasha. People will follow my wrong example. I am not working. <laughs> so that's what I am I'm also working. That's what Krishna describes. Yeah. Then there will be unwanted population and I would destroy the peace of all living entities. So Krishna gives, gives this reason. For the sake of leading the people in the right path, one should work. So very, very important in this section also. Yeah. Not to disrupt the minds of the ignorant men attached to the fruitive results of the prescribed is. A learned person should not induce them to stop work. Rather by working in a spirit of devotion. Right? Whatever work we do, Krishna consciousness doesn't mean that you have to give up your work. Work in a spirit of Krishna consciousness. Connect your work to the Lord. Somebody like to sing can sing for Krishna. Somebody like to uh, art or a craft or whatever things, different skills, abilities we have, do it in connection with Krishna. Somebody is working and all offer the result of her work as a Krishna, as a charity. So that gradually one will pick up. This is also important verse. Prakrute kriyamanani gune karmani sarvasha ahankara vimudhatma kartaham itimanyate the spirit soul, bewildered by influence of false ego, thinks himself the doer of activities. Right? So he thinks that I am doing the work. <laughs> Why? Because he gets carried away by the three modes, which Krishna describes in detail in the 14th chapter. No. So one is a knowledge of my term, does not engage in the senses and the sense gratification, knowing well the difference of the work in devotion and work for food results. So like that, uh, one is bewildered by three modes work selfishly. Yeah. So therefore, Arjun, surrendering all your works unto me with full knowledge of me, without desires for profit, with no claims of proprietorship, and free from lethargy, fight. <laughs> Give up laziness. Yudhyasva Vigatasvara. This is also very, very important verse. 3.30. Mai sarvani karmani sanyasyadhyatma chetasa. Nirashir nirmamo bhutva yudhyasva vigata jvara. Give up the lethargy and the fight as an all work, as an offering to me. Mai sarvani karmani. With the spirit of uh, renunciation. Sanyas adhyatma chetasa. And give up the false proprietorship. Nirashir nirmamo. It's minor things and all. Yeah. And that's why Yeme Matamidam Nityam Anutishtanti Manava. This is my opinion, origin. That uh, how faithfully, without envy, becoming free from bondage of fruit action, you know, one should execute. Yeah. But those who out of envy disregard these teachings and do not follow are considered bereft of all knowledge, befooled, and ruined their endeavor. So previously also we read in vain, life is in vain. Yeah. There also Krishna repeats again. Their endeavors are simply ruined. So useless work will not achieve any perfection. Even a man of knowledge acts according to his own nature for three modes. What can repression accomplish? Falsely don't give up Arjun to fight. You are telling that I will not fight, I will go away. But then you will fight in the forest. <laughs> because fighting is your nature. So falsely one should not accomplish. But connect to Krishna. You fight for establishing dharma. This Krishna is saying, you know, one should not come under the control of such attachment and aversion. Attachment and aversion, bhoga and tyaga, these are like a pendulum blocks. You know pendulum? All of you know the pendulum? The watch, uh, they have the pendulum. Now, when hour happens, then that rings, ting, 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 ting. So pendulum has an extreme. So bhoga and tyaga, attachment and aversion. So one should not be neither of the extreme. 
but come in the balance and work for Krishna. That's what I mean. Krishna explains here. And then Shayam Swadharma Viguna Paradharma Shaya. So better to do one's own duty rather than doing others' duty perfectly. So destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging others' duties for it to follow another's path is dangerous. So Arjun, you are a Kshatriya. Huh? You do the work of Kshatriya. You don't falsely do another's duty of sannyas of giving up the work. So it's a it will cause it. So this is a 17 to 34. So whose example is given by Lord here? Anyone noticed? Exemplary behavior. And for that, Lord gave one example. Anyone observed? Janak Maharaj. Ah, yes, very good. The Janak Maharaj example is given. Yes. So now let's see the, the fifth one. Uh, the fourth, fourth section, enemy of the soul. This is the very, very important, the Krishna describes. After telling all those how to work, how one should be selfless, how one should put the best efforts and all, then Krishna, Arjun puts very intelligent question. That shows Arjuna's uh, intelligence to know about nicely. Now, please read, Prabhu, you'd like to read? E, enemy of the soul, through 36 to 43. You will read Anand Prabhu. Okay, Prabhu. Yeah. Enemy of the soul, verses 36 to 43. After hearing about this practical and logical process, the natural reaction is an enthusiastic resolve to dedicate oneself to it. But Arjuna asks Krishna, In life, even though I know the best course of action, what is it that impels me time and time again to act improperly and against my good intelligence. Krishna then explains the root cause of this phenomenon is the eternal uh, enemy of the aspiring spiritualist, spiritualist, lust. The inherent quality of the soul is to love, to selflessly serve without any personal agenda. However, when the soul descends to this world, that pure love perverts into lust, and one ceaselessly tries to enjoy in a self-centered way, without proper regard for others. The way of lust impels one to seek immediate gratification and aban abandon activities that actually benefit them. In this way, lust cheats one of a progressive and happy life and offers only meagre, instantaneous and temporary gratification in return. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Nice. Meager, instantaneous and temporary. <laughs> Very low quality and just a short moment it will go. So originally we all are supposed to love the Supreme Law. But then this lust, which is a perverted reflection, exactly opposite. Love means selflessly, sacrificing for the law. Lust means selfishly, for our own personal thing. Like a Ravana, the Sira we celebrated, and adamantly want for oneself. Sita was a prohibited for him. He would have not. But then he was adamant and that's what, that caused the destruction of it. So very, very important section. We'll just go through these verses. Uh, it will make it a very meaningful. Um, so let's put the screen here. Yeah. So after reading all those things, hearing from Krishna how to work, Arjuna puts the question. Atakena prayukto vyam papam charati purusha anichanna pivarshneya anichanna. Oh, oh Lord, oh Vrishni dynasty, you are the Lord, the Vrishnis. Anichana, mera ichcha nahi hai, phir bhi baladiva niyojita, it forces me to act in a wrong way. Papam charati purusha. What is that, oh Lord? What is that which forces us? And then Krishna says that famous verse, 337. This is also a memorization verse. Kama esha kuroda esha rajoguna samudhava mahashano maha. Mahashano maha papma vidhayena mihavare. Correct. So here uh, Krishna, uh, Lord Krishna explains. Kama esha kuroda esha. Hmm. It is a kama lust born out of the uh, rajoguna samudhava. Passion. Mode of passion it has been born. Hmm. Which turns into the wrath. Kuroda. It's called. So this is a mahashano. It's the greatest enemy. Mahapapma, Vidhenam, Yavairina. You understand that this is the greatest enemy of our life. So these things are very nicely Lord explains. And then he goes on explaining further how this lust is different, different levels of lust. 
like a fire covered by smoke, the mirror covered by the dust, and third example, the embryo covered by the womb. So more gross, gross, and gross. It's like that different degrees of lust one has. So we learn all those technical details as we go ahead. Like Prabhupada gives example of a, a trees because they grossly exemplified the lust. They got the body of a tree. Prabhupada writes here in the purport. Yeah. So, and then, uh, yeah, avritam jnana methena. One should uncover this by knowledge. One should know that jnani no nitya vairina. This is the greatest enemy. <laughs> See, imagine if the government of India doesn't know who is the enemy attacking. And they're just simply sitting. Then naturally, enemy will come and destroy the whole country. <laughs> so one should know what one enemy is, right? Without knowing enemy, then where will shoot? <laughs> although I have a gun, although I have the things, but then if I don't know only enemy, <laughs> so that's what uh, Krishna is telling. Kama rupena kaunteya. He kaunteya, he Arjun. This is a form of a lust, which is our enemy. Dushpurena analena cha, which burns, which, uh, yeah, which burns like a fire. So one should know that this is our eternal enemy. Lifetime after lifetime, because of our selfish desire to enjoy, we are getting caught up in this material world. And where this lust is, okay, I now know the enemy, but I should know where is that enemy, the address of the enemy. <laughs> then Krishna says the address of the enemy, so that you can go and shoot it. <laughs> Indriyani mano buddhis, uh, yeah. Asya dishtanam uchyate e tarvi mohayate sa jnanam avrutya dehinam. So these are the three sitting places of lust. The senses, the mind and the intelligence. So the lust is there in our senses, in our mind and intelligence also. And because of that, it covers our real knowledge. And then one gets confused. So then Krishna gives the solution also. How one should do? Therefore, Arjun. In the beginning only, one should try to curb by regulating our senses. That's why its regulation is so important. Regulating, regulating our life, sleeping habits, getting up, right, having a proper diet. And not only bodily regulation, but even spiritual regulation also. Regularly chanting our rounds, regular sadhana. And slay this destroyer of knowledge and self-realization. By that one can kill this enemy. Yeah, And then Krishna says, Hierarchy of our these things. Senses are superior to dull matter, but above the senses there is a uh, the mind above which there is an intelligence, and then there is a soul. That's how the hierarchy it is. So using our intelligence, one should conquer. Evam buddhe param buddha. So buddhi is a topmost, intelligence is a topmost. One should conquer this enemy lust, and that's what the next chapter begins. The knowledge. Because food for our buddhi is a knowledge. So what is that knowledge? That's the fourth chapter. So this section is very, very amazing. We're just revising here. That's why we're going a little fast. But uh, you can surely spend time in a week uh, to read in detail. And I'll just show you those charts of the third chapter. What are those the cycle of yeah, different, different stages, uh, rungs of the yoga ladder, and then the uh, this enemy lust, yeah, this is that cycle. Animal life, this is like just doing a karma, not following anything. Then karma kanda, then sakama karma, nishkama karma. And then above that, there is jnana yoga, shtanya, and bhakti yoga is the topmost. This is like a ladder, okay? perfecting our life. So Krishna describes here the four ones. So additionally, it has been explained, yeah. This is how another progressive yoga life, same thing has been explained. So basically, if you don't follow God, our life is animal life only. Very simple. Nothing. <laughs> then by adding a scriptural injunction and then taking a Krishna consciousness, then we progress more and more. So what Prabhupada has given us is the highest thing actually. <laughs> we need not to worry much. Just follow what Prabhupada has given. right? So Lord Krishna is explaining in detail so that people understand. Yeah. And this is a cycle we studied. Cycle of sacrifice. 3.14 and 15. How out of uh, the uh, the Vedas describes our prescribed duties by which we can do our yajna. By doing yajna, the rains are coming. Then the grains are being come because of the rains. And then our life is maintained. And how the Vedas are coming? They come from the Supreme Lord. And that's what one should do. The best process, the best yajna, and then the best mantra for the best form of life. That is human life. <laughs> so chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. 
So this is a detailed description of this third chapter called as Karma Yoga. So the expansion we saw the tree because tree works selflessly. Tree doesn't get anything in return. So T for Tyaga, that is renunciation. Lord Krishna describes it before. Then R for rungs of the yoga ladder, right? And then E for uh, T R E E. So last T is the enemy of the soul. <laughs> and then the third E. Anyone remember what is the third E? Krishna gives Janak Maharaj name. What is that for? It's a third E. Uh, exemplary life. Yadya Dacharati Shrestas. That verse there comes. How, how our life should be exemplary. So that's what the third chapter in detail it goes. So you can take a note of this uh, section. T R E E. So that's what it goes. The Tyaga runs exemplary life and enemy of the soul. 1 to 9, 10 to 16, 17 to 35, 36 to 43. So total 43 verses. And then the third chapter, Krishna concludes that using our intelligence, one should conquer using the knowledge. Then what is that knowledge? That's how the fourth chapter is going to begin, the transcendental knowledge. Okay, that we'll study in our next Sunday. Thank you all for joining. Let us uh, end with the Vaishnava Pranam. Vancha Kalpataru Vishak Pasindu Bhai Pacha Patitana Pavani Pyo Vaishnava Pyo Namo Namaha Ananda Koti Vaishnava Vrindaki Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.